Hi everyone and welcome to Dennis Deep Cuts, the 61st installment of this fine YouTube series. Today we're going to talk about records made in 1972. Let's see what happens. So why 1972, you ask? Well, I saw some friends of mine indulge in some online thing where you were supposed to post records from the year that you were born. Yes, I was born in 1972, which means that in a couple of weeks I'll be 52 years old, which is slightly surreal because I don't feel a day over 45 <laughs> or 32, or depending on uh, what day it is. Um, I thought it was a fun idea, so I dug into my record collection. I busted out 10, my 10 favorite records from 1972. And I was surprised at the amount of great records that were released in 1972. Um, some super cool records that might not be my you know, favorite, favorite records and some just stone cold classics. Um, so yeah, that's what we're doing today. Top 10 list of 1972 albums. Uh, what year were you born? What's your favorite record from the year that you were born? And what's your favorite record from the year of 1972? So we're going to dig in. First couple of all in world mentions. Some super cool records that did not really make the cut, but they're awesome in their own right. And here they are. So in 10th place, we have Captain Beefheart with his 8th album, Clear Spot. Uh, Captain Beefheart is called Don Vliet. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Um, if you know anything, you know that Captain Beefheart and his magic band started and they were kind of wild, rambunctious, bluesy, weird kind of music. Uh, Trap Mask Replica, their second album is like, uh, like this chaotic, beautiful masterpiece of a mess of a record. Um, always on the fringes of things, always wild and crazy. Uh, but the time they reached this album, their eighth album, for reasons unknown, they decided to make a more uh, commercial record. And uh, I love this record. Uh, the songwriting is perfect. The production is crisp, clean, and it's such a beautiful, beautiful album. Uh, if you think that the madness of early Captain Before is not for you, then maybe start with this one because it's a super cool record and even though it is by far his most commercial record uh, up to this date, it is a fantastic record. So Captain Beefheart, clear spot. On ninth place we have the hardest working man in showbiz, I'm talking about James Brown of course. Um, James Brown was quite an extraordinary artist, uh, he put out his first record in the late 50s and by the time of 1972 he's put up more than 40 full-length records um, but he always managed to reinvent himself always managed to be on top of his game um, the, the myth goes that in the late 60s James Brown went to Nigeria and he saw Fela Kuti play live and then he was like that I'm gonna I'm gonna do that basically and uh, you know kind of didn't really invent funk but kind of did invent funk and uh, Get on the Good Foot, one of those records from 1972, which is like full-on funk, James Brown assault. It's just a glorious record. Um, honestly, anything with James Brown in between 1968 and 1972, 73 is worth checking out. You can pretty much pick any record from that time period and it's going to be a killer record. It's also pretty fantastic that James Brown at this point was in his 40s and he was completely on top of his game. He had his own record label. He produced uh, albums with the JBs and Lynn Collins, and he also put out like at least two or three records every year in that time period with his own band, and um, all of them are fucking killer. This is not an exception. Get on the good foot. I could have picked uh, some other record from 1972, but I'm, I'm picking this one for now. Nineteen seventy-two is also the year of one of the greatest debut albums of all time, and I'm talking about Big Stars, record number one. And this, if, if you're uh, if you have a good eye, you will say this is Radio City with Big Star, but it's also Big Star record number one, uh, as weird double album compilation that I bought many, many, many moons ago. 
Um, big star star in Memphis, the brainchild of Alex Chilton, who was a teenage pop star in the band Box Tops, and together with Chris Bell, they put out one of the finest, most uh, creative and beautiful pieces of music in 1972. Um, it's kind of power pop, but it's also loose and weird and sort of uh, unhinged in the best possible way. Um, Chris Bell left the band after this first record and put out he put out one seven inch uh, "I'm the Cosmos." That all, but he, there's also a compilation of always demos that came out in the '90s that is marvelous. Uh, Alex Shelton soldiered on with Big Star for two more albums that are also pretty good, but they're missing that. Um, Chris Bell ingredients. Uh, the first four tracks on this album are some of the best music ever put to vinyl. And if the, the, if the rest of the record would have been as strong as those four, first four songs, this probably been number one on the list. But it is a fantastic record, Big Star, where it's such a, such a great band. Uh, check him out and also check out that, that, that um, Chris Bell record. It's, it's quite beautiful. Number seven, one of the coolest records of the 70s, Khan's fourth album, Ege Bamyazi. Khan was a band from Cologne in Germany and uh, experimental, kind of lumped into the whole Croat rock thing. Um, after the first record, Dama Suzuki from Japan joined as a singer and they put out some of the most creative and wonderful records of the early 70s, uh, Tagamago before this one and then their fourth record. I think this is wonderful. I think it's uh, it, it's not a record that really needs to write verse, chorus, verse, chorus type of songs. It's more interested in layers and textures and rhythms and weird patterns. It's quite experimental and it's fucking phenomenal. I think a lot of stuff that they were doing lay the groundwork for bands like Public Image Limited and like the weird post-punk scene. Um, yeah, check out this record or maybe the record before Tagamago. It's just like a masterpiece. Um, wonderful. Sixth place, Lou Reed, Transformer. Uh, Velvet Underground broke up. Lou Reed started his solo career in 1972 with two albums. First album, Lou Reed is uh, sparse and uh, very bleak and dour. And the second record, Transformer, I would argue is the best Lou Reed album ever made. Um, I love Lou Reed. I love The Velvet Underground. I think Lou Reed put, put out a whole slew of fantastic records. But I think this is the greatest record he ever put out. Uh, the songwriting is phenomenal. The band's on fire. Um, there's like certifiable hits on this album. And uh, yeah, it's great. I did uh, an episode with my friend Peter about the last Lou record ever. You should check it out because it's a very, very, very interesting record. Uh, but yeah, Transformer is one of those, uh, just the coolest record you'll have in your collection, basically. And it, it is, it's not a very punky record, but it is cool that Lou Reed is like the godfather of punk rock. And there's a couple of songs on this record where you understand why, why that is. But uh, yeah, just check it out for yourself. Lou Reed Transformer. Five out of five. On fifth place, uh, there's a record that we touched upon a little bit on the Shape of Jazz to Come episode that you should check out. It's, of course, Miles Davis on the corner. Miles Davis put out his first record in the late 50s. And, uh, you know, 20 plus years into his career, he managed to reinvent himself and uh, he kept reinventing himself on, all the way until the end. Some, some similarities to James Brown, even though they were doing quite different music. Even though James Brown and Miles Davis sort of crossed paths a little bit here in the early 70s. Um, Miles Davis with Bitches Brew from 1970s started a pretty interesting um, path, you know, like mixing jazz and free jazz with funk music. And On the Corner is just one of those. It's like a funk jazz masterpiece um yeah what else is there to say it's quite interesting to do lists like this because uh, there are a couple of stone cold classics that didn't make the cut 
Um, and as I said, there's a ton of cool records that came out in the early 70s that didn't make the cut either. Um, and that it's quite fascinating. I mean, all these records are five out of five. All these records are like records you should have in your record collection almost. Um, the next one is another five out of five record. I mean, it, the top four and top ten is it's all five out of five. But this one is Black Sabbath Volume 4. Uh, Black Sabbath, of course, Birmingham. Um, <laughs> interestingly enough, the only people on this entire list that are still alive, which is fucking insane to think about. Uh, Black Sabbath, I'm sure they haven't lived you know, the, the most clean and sober lives. Um, but yeah, Black Sabbath's run of their first six albums, I think no one can ever beat that. That's like, that's almost six perfect records in a row. Name, give me one more example of a band that put out six albums straight. That was all killer, pretty much no filler. Uh, I don't know of any bands and volume four no exception a lot of people think it's the best black sabbath record um i'm not sure i think it's phenomenal of course um yeah what a what a run imagine putting out six albums like that in a row it just blows my mind on third place we have one of the saddest men in music ever, and I'm of course talking about Nick Drake with his third album, Pink Moon. Um, Nick Drake put out two records before this. They were quite sweeping and orchestral and amazingly beautiful and amazingly great. Uh, by the time he came to this record, he's like, he wanted to strip it down. So it's way more sparse, uh, basically just him and his guitar mostly. Um, and it's a wonderful record. Uh, Nick Drake's one of those artists that like, he never really got his due when he was alive and he was super self-conscious about his singing he hated his voice and he didn't think he was that great and um, two years after this record came out uh, he killed himself on antidepressant drugs which is super super sad um, all of nick drake's records are wonderful and phenomenal this might be my favorite pink moon and uh, what a stunning and beautifully sad and depressing record this is. On second place, and I mean I can't make a list of albums from 1972 and not include David Bowie, The Rise and Fall of Six Stardust and The Spiders from Mars. Um, David Bowie, is, I think he was off to kind of a slow start. Uh, the Man Who Sold the World and Hunky Dory started finding his footing. But it wasn't until he sort of reinvented himself as Sig Stardust that he really, you know, found his true voice. This record is just phenomenal. The production is great. The songwriting is insane. The band is on fire. And uh, it's just one of those uh, records that totally define an artist. Like, you know, um, they wrote this record out and it propelled him into stardom. And it propelled him into the artist that he became and the artist that just kept reinventing himself all, all up until the day he died. And uh, yeah, what a, what a wonderful record. One of these days I might want to do one of these uh, Debo is best to worst. Uh, there's a lot of records to go through, but uh, it will be interesting. I love Bowie. Who doesn't? So the number one pick from 1972, the year I was born, is The Hipster's Choice. It's the first Noi record. Um, yeah, I know, but it's it's one of those records, I think, I've listened to this so many hours. Um, Noi is, of course, from Düsseldorf in Germany. And um, I started with two of the guys, Michael and uh, Klaus, uh, left a band called Kraftwerk <laughs> that they played in when Kraftwerk was like a crowd rock band uh, before they became the Kraftwerk that we know and love today. And they started Noi. And Noi is based on um, rhythm, basically. Uh, people say it's music to, 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 dry in, to drive your car to, which is kind of correct. It's very propulsive. And it has that beat that, that 
came to define Krat Rock, basically. Um, this is such an extraordinary, cool record. Um, being two people, it's so layered, it's so fantastic and uh, hypnotic and wonderful and beautiful. And uh, this week it is my pick for the best record from 1972. And Per always, I mean, it's always like my highly subjective taste and uh, my feeling for the day. Um, there's a really cool documentary called, I think it's called My Heart is a Drum, The Heart is a Drum, about um, one of these dudes who then went on to, to, to a band called La Düsseldorf, which is also really cool. Um, yeah, Neu, my favorite record from 1972. What is your favorite record from 1972? What's your favorite record from the year was born? Please leave a comment in the comments and thank you for checking out my channel. Thank you for supporting me. Um, yeah. Until next time, my friends, stay wild. Bye-bye.